In an undisclosed area hidden from the public eye is a supermax prison holding the world's most dangerous superpowered individuals. The prisoners at this facility have no chance of getting their freedom back. The cells are filled with mind controllers, energy wielders, shapeshifters, murderers, arsonists, and mentally deranged beings. Hallway 315 at the facility ends in a cul-de-sac. It was a large round room with prisoners separated into subdivided rooms with visible glass barriers. At first glance, the transparent looking glass just seemed like ordinary glass. However, they were specifically designed to dampen the abilities of the individual prisoners residing within the cells. In one cell was an 8 foot tall green dinosaur with sharp teeth razor-sharp claws, a long tail, and a metal cannon-like cylinder adhered to his right hand. Oddly enough, the dinosaur seemed to be wearing clothing. In the cell to the left of the dinosaur was an unusual-looking little girl in tattered, blood-stained clothing, playing with a doll who was identically dressed like her. The girl had her hair up in ponytails and wore a blank stare on her face. The girl was humming an eerie tune in the cell as she lifted her doll with the butt and eyes up into the air and watched the doll fall to the ground without trying to catch her. In the cell to the right of the dinosaur was a skinny looking man who was on his knees praying in Spanish. The man wore a mask and oversized clothing. The bottom of his reddish pink jeans looked torn and ripped apart. His face was difficult to make out with all the hair drooping on his face. Across from the dinosaur were three other cells. One held a woman dressed as a pirate. She had two-toned brown and red hair, wore a red poet shirt under a purple coat, had black slops, red boots, and a purple tricorn hat that looked like it came directly out of the 1800s. The other two cells contained prisoners who were speaking with each other as though they were familial. These prisoners were two of the most infamous villains around, Rodrigo Reyes of Spark City, Colorado, and his cousin, Ryan Blethen. The media referred to the two by different names, Nagato Nerve and Electris. Nagato and Electris were in the middle of discussing their escape. Roddy, is today the day? As soon as the guards finish their rounds tonight, the plan will swing into action. What are you two naturin' about? You better mind your own business there, matey, if you know what's good for you. Sounds like a struck a nerve. Oh, I know all about ye. I've heard tales of your weapon and drug trafficking. I cannot say that I condone it, but that ain't for me to decide. All I am saying be that I once out. I was born to have the wind at me back and the vast sea in front of me. You have nothing can offer my cousin and I. Perhaps we got off on the wrong foot. I am Captain Olivia. Pleasure to meet ye. And let me tell ye, I have a great power. I will be more than happy to lend you me gifts if you can help me escape. What sort of gifts do you have, Captain? Don't tell me you think Miss Halloween's spirit costume over here can possibly be of any use. I have the ability to create constructs out of bones that I manifest with just a thought. I can create shields, cutlasses, and even a ship. I guess that answers your question. I guess so. Well, Captain, welcome aboard. The pleasure be all mine. It has been almost a year since Dinosaur became the digestive dino. In the months that passed since he underwent his transformation, the animalistic side of his mind was trying to take over. However, since being captured and being in direct contact with the special power dampeners, Dean's human side, his logical side, had reclaimed his mind. He was finally able to form cohesive thoughts and his gears began turning. He was carefully listening in to the conversation being had by the three inmates in front of him. He had been here for six months and not once had anyone spoken to him outside of the guards who would slide him pounds of cattle meat during mealtime. Before Dean could speak with Nagato about his escape plan, a thud hit the glass barrier in the cell to his left, which caused a discharge of electricity to surround the barrier. Dean waited for a few seconds before asking, Are you alright? Oh, I'm fine, but Anjana isn't. Who, who's Anjana? Anjana's my doll, silly. She was trying to escape after listening to the cute man over there. Dean looked across his cell and was looking at Nagato. He was wearing a red mask with a gold visor. The guards let him keep the mask on when they brought him in. In fact, most of the inmates were able to keep their costumes, but not their weapons. They probably figured the power dampeners would keep all the inmates powerless if they were ability users, so wearing the costume would be no big deal. A few hours later, it was 9 p.m. The guards were making their final rounds for the night. Dean waited patiently, for this was the moment he overheard Nagato whispering earlier to Electris. The lights had turned off and the sound of metal doors were closed at the top of the hallway entrance. Looks like the guards have all left for the night. I guess things will become interesting in just a short while. 
Dean suspected that the little girl was unlike any other little girl. Besides the fact that she gave him the creeps, it seems that she too overheard Nagato and planned to escape with him and Electris. I guess we'll see. Moments later, a bright blue flash appeared in the middle of the cul-de-sac. Mina Nand, an aura user from the west coast, stood at the center of the flash. It's about time, Lady Cardiac. Excuse my cousin's manners. It's great to see you, Mina. Thank you, Ryan. Roddy, you know when it comes to a job, I'm punctual. That you are. Okay, let's break you out of this place. Mina scanned the room and caught the eyes of the other inmates. But none made her feel fear quite like the little girl. Her heart began to race and sweat began to run down her brow. For a moment, she was able to sense all of the girl's negative energy. And then, in the next moment, it vanished. Mina was eventually able to regain control over herself and identify the girl. You didn't tell me that you were in the presence of the puppet master. Her body count is higher than mine. Nagato, Electris, Captain Olivia, and Dean all turned to stare at the young girl's cell. The little girl stared back with a blank stare and a devilish grin. Then she lifted up her doll Anjana to face the group. She then playfully waved the doll's hands at everybody. Then she giggled. I had no idea. Looks like we may need to add her and Captain Olivia here to our escape plans. Oh, thank you so much, mister. I'm eternally grateful. You better include me to that list, Nagato. Otherwise, this diner's gonna make a little noise that can fill up an entire Jurassic Park. Huh. Well, it looks like we'll be taking the whole lot. Then I'll have to charge my usual rate and add an additional service fee. If you can get us all out, I'll even add interest. Now you're speaking my language. Lady Cardiac surveyed the room to see if there was a way of shutting off the power dampeners from outside the cells. Lady Cardiac, are you able to interrupt the source of power from the dampeners? I don't see anything that looks like a power source. Nagato, need I remind you that each cell is synchronized to the individual. <laughs> For a reptile, you're pretty smart. Can you teleport inside of the cells and get us out one at a time? I'll do you one better. I've been training since the last time I was on the west coast. Training? What for? I ran into a young aura user. His ability was intriguing, so for the first time ever, I trained to up my game. Lady Cardiac closed her eyes and outstretched her hands. Blue light began to fill the room. Aura surrounded the inmates, and in a flash, they all instantly disappeared and reappeared in front of their cells. Miss Gintz is crawling. Adios. No, no, no. What is wrong, mister? I did not want to escape. I chose to be in prison. Why would you choose that, mate? Mi poder es demasiado fuerte. Lastima la gente con mi poder porque no lo puedo controlar. Anjana says she doesn't understand you. He's saying that his power is too strong. He hurts people with his power because he can't control it. I don't see the problem here. I get it. I didn't want to hurt others either. But when this power overtook me, I guess when it retakes me, I'll have no choice. You don't understand. I love to hurt others. Me encanta lastimar a los demás. Well, friend, you'll fit right in with me and my gang. In fact, all of you are welcome to join. We can live as freely as we want and never have to fear a single thing. The room went quiet. Everyone began to contemplate if joining Nagato might be their best bet. He is somehow able to secure a powerful aura user to help break him out of an inescapable supermax prison. He just might be able to provide them with a life free of fear. Before we leave, we need to get our gear. The gang went down the hallway and found a room that said Inmate Belongings. Electris was able to secure her neuronic power whip. Nagato got the remainder of his power suit. Dean secured his acid container that connected with the acid gun adhered to his right arm. Puppet Master grabbed some thumbtacks, pieces of clay, and some string. Captain Olivia grabbed her two pistols, and Musculo grabbed his golden bracelets and a cosmic-looking hammer that was several sizes too big for him to carry. When he got his hands on the hammer and the bracelets, the look in his eyes changed, and so did something inside of him. Lady Cardiac was asked if she could teleport the group outside, but that would involve more power than what she had, 
so the group decided to proceed for the exit on foot. Nagato and the gang approached a large pair of metal doors. He lifted his hand towards the doors and felt a surge of electricity coursing from them. It had been some time since he last felt the surge of electricity that didn't hurt him, and it felt all too good. Nagato asked everyone to step back. He matched his electric current with that of the doors and neutralized it. The doors swung open and in front of them were several guards with weapons drawn and aimed at Nagato and the rest of the inmates. Before Nagato could tell his gang to attack, Musculo's body began to morph and become a massive muscular body. He clapped his hands very hard and was able to blast the guards 10 feet away into the walls. One of the guards on the ground managed to press a panic button, which set off the alarms. More guards began to fill in the room. Musculo grabbed his large cosmic camera and swung it at five guards simultaneously. Nagato looked at him and smiled under his mask, clearly impressed with what Musculos can do. Another guard drew his electric baton and was aiming for Musculo. Without warning, the guard zapped himself with his own baton. Puppet Master had her doll Anjana in her hands holding a baton made of clay touching the doll's chest, the same spot as where the guard had just been zapped. She giggled and began to skip around the room, holding her doll in her hands. A guard shot at Nagato, but Dean was able to protect him. The bullets couldn't penetrate his thick dinosaur hide. Thanks, Digestive Dino. I can't let the guy offering me freedom lose his life now, can I? Another guard attacked Lady Cardiac, but was unable to hit her with her quick teleporting ability. Captain Olivia shot at the guards and then created a sword out of thin air. The sword was strange, to say the least. This sword was made entirely out of bones. Captain Olivia was able to make quick work of the guards and then proceeded forward to handle a few more. Electris had knocked out the last few guards blocking an elevator to the surface. Well, everyone, what are y'all waiting for? Time for us to make our grand escape. One by one, the inmates filled in the elevator. Nagato was on his way towards the elevator when something in the corner of the room caught his eye. There was a corkboard filled with wanted posters. All their wanted posters were there with X's marked through them. At the very top of the corkboard were the words Top Priority, with five photos underneath that. Nagato took the wanted posters and stepped onto the elevator. What have you got there, Roddy? Our next assignment.